beautiful people welcome back to my channel it's your girl Iyangima Omo I am super excited to be back again with another video in today's video I'm going to be reviewing the Nollywood movie that is currently showing on Netflix Glamour Girls now if you want to know my thoughts and opinions on this movie then you definitely need to sit back relax and keep on watching Welcome back guys. So I decided to review Glamour Girls. Now Glamour Girls is the remake of the 1990 classics um, Glamour Girls. So when I saw the trailer of this movie and I saw the cast members, I was looking to watch um, the movie. I was looking for um, drama and um, more excitement from the movie. So I was really, really looking forward to the movie. So it was released recently and I have seen the movie. So. I decided to come on here and review what I thought about the movie tell you guys what I liked and what I didn't like about the movie so alright so without wasting much of your time so let's just dive right into the first thing on my list um, which is the performance the characters and the acting of these actors on this movie so first and foremost let's talk about Donna Donna is played by Sekwetim and looking at Sekwetim and having known Sekwetim as to be a very uh, talented um, Nollywood actress, I was looking uh, to see a lot from her in this movie. So Donna is played by Sekwetim and Donna is a boss lady who owns an escort um, company. She takes up these girls, she uh, grooms them and she sends them off to a political um, client, a politician um, that can pay well for them. So she runs an escort um, business. Okay, talking about the performance of Mr. Payton on this um, character. Uh, well, her acting was good and of course this Mr. Payton, she gave us a good acting, she gave us a good performance, but I didn't really understand um, the character of Donna. For me, I felt like Donna did not have emotions. Or does it mean that people that run that kind of business do not relate well with our people? Donna was not relating well with our girls. Like she didn't care about our girls. She was so selfish and self-centered in this character. So I didn't like the character of Donna because of the fact that she picks up these girls and she's trying to groom these girls and um, send them off as escorts and she should have a little bit of a personal relationship um, with this um, girl. She should show empathy and all that but she was just all strict, 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 um, um, straight face, straight face, straight face, like we didn't see emotions that couldn't relate with our own um, character but as for the performance of Lucy based on that character, well I think she did well to portray her character but they would have done more than that on the character of Donna. Alright, so moving right along to the next character on this movie, the character of Emanuela, played by my very own Sharon Uja. Okay, I want to say that I love Sharon Uja's performance um, in this movie. I have seen Sharon Uja in a lot of movies, like from Skinny Girl in Transit. I think that was the first movie I saw her in and I fell in love with her. Then I've seen her in other movies like Still Falling, where she played um, the love interest of Daniel X and F film. And she did a very good job portraying this classy, um, elegant, and um, bossy vibe in that um, movie. So coming to this movie, Glamour Girls, I she tried as much as possible because her character was kind of like transcending from one place to another she started off as this hustler who is owing herself in order to take herself out from the class of poverty um right from when she entered this um uh um, escort company of donna and she just you know switched from being that low life to a class lady so she did but i think her performance was up to the past it was top notch i loved her performance and i read something on instagram where someone said that um glamour girls just showcase that this is will always be a good actress a talented actress and how sharon Uja has become um, better in her acting and i agree with that person sharon Uja did well uh she tried as much as possible to 
play a character, to bring life to a character, and I loved it. All right, moving right along to the next character on this movie, the character of Gemma, played by Jocelyn Dumas. First and foremost, uh, Jocelyn Dumas, of course, is a very gorgeous lady, but I don't really understand the character of Gemma in this movie. I don't really get Gemma. Like, okay, in this movie, Gemma is supposed to be um, Donna's sister who was also in the business of owing herself and something happened, she left the business and then she comes back in because of one thing or the other. I mean, her character was kind of flat. They didn't really make her character stick to us. Like, her character was all over the place. And first and foremost, um, what didn't really sit well by me was when she met Sharonuja the first time in Donna's company and she was like advising um, Emma that this business is not for anybody, she should go and get a job. Then she herself comes back after found, finding herself out of it, she comes back right into it. I mean, I don't really understand um, that character of Gemma, but we are going to talk more on that um, later on in the video. So the next character in this movie is the character of uh Segi Lola or Bitan or Ogidan. I can't really remember her saw them. I can't remember the the person she played or the character she played in this movie, but she was one of um Donna's girls, but she was uh onto drugs, she was overdosing on drugs and she did well you know in our character but i felt what they were trying our story was not really necessary like if i didn't really think it was necessary for them to bring her in i didn't really see um the reason why they brought her in as a character in that movie it was unnecessary i i, I, I didn't really get it okay yes fine like it was just no, I didn't appreciate um, her character, but as for her acting, um, she did well. Um, this lady, I think Peggy Lola, I've seen her before in the men's club. Yes, in the men's club where she plays um, Louis' um, fiancé that was, you know, arranged for Louis in the men's club. So she is good. She is very good and she did well to play a part. Then the next character that I'm so excited to talk about um, in this movie was Toke Makinwa, <laughs> who played the character of Louis, one of Jonah's escorts. I mean, to say the least, Toke Makinwa didn't have a problem um, bringing a character to life because I think it's almost close um, to the kind of life she lives. Um, in real life she um, portrays this baby girl lifestyle her brand portrays it so i didn't really think it was going to be a problem as or difficult for her to you know play the character that she played but all the same it was nice watching her showcase her baby girl lifestyle kind of thing so okay all right so those are the ladies um that i wanted to talk about then moving on to the guys the actors um, in the um, movie. So the first person I want to talk about quickly is James Gardiner, who played Zeribe in this um, movie. I have seen this face before. I think I've seen him in Skinny Girl in Transit, where he played the boyfriend of um, um, Shalewada Saranuja. And I'm seeing him again in this movie. Quite, uh, for me, I feel like his character, I didn't really understand what they were trying to do with his character. Was he, um, uh, okay, fine, they showed that he is um, a bodyguard, and then what else was, uh, like, I didn't really understand why he was kind of like a key um, character, one of the key characters in this movie. Then, um, what was that trick all about, you know, in the movie where he saw the first thing where he first of all saw Sharon, you know, dancing, pole dancing, and he goes to do that uh, ring trick that uh, they accused Sharon of stealing and all. I don't really, I didn't really get that. What was that for? Because I was thinking maybe he was trying to do that to get Sharon's attention at that then, but after that, he just left and, and I didn't really understand it. Then another place I didn't really understand what they were trying to do with the character of Zeribe was when he was getting it on with Emma right in the 
same group where Shagun was. Now Shagun was downstairs. Shagun is um Sharon's uh sugar daddy mm -hmm, sponsor who is downstairs and they are getting it on in the bedroom come on that is so unrealistic i'm assuming they said that shagun went out to get something and that happened it would have been more convincing so they lost me in that scene i was like what is happening here so that is that about the character of um james gardner so the next person i want to talk about um that did a good job in this movie is Aaron, who was played by Uzo Arukwe. Okay, so Uzo Arukwe is one of my favorite actors and he did well in his performance in this movie. He played the character of Aaron, Tokemaki West's husband, and he did well in portraying what he was supposed to do. I don't think I have seen him play this um, cocky, evil man kind of vibe before, but I think he made me laugh. He did well, so I would say thumbs up to him. I enjoyed watching him in the movie. So the next character I want to talk about is Femi Branch. I mean, Femi Branch, I would want to say, is one of my favorite characters in this movie. Femi Branch plays Shagun in this movie, um, Emma's sugar daddy or sponsor i mean any every time i saw this man like he got me glued his scenes were not that much in the movie he didn't happen much in the movie but the little time he appeared i wanted to watch him the more the more and the more i think the first thing that he got me was a scene he was watching a football match on tv and the baby wanted to introduce a match to him i mean the acting how he acted, you know, acted as someone that was so glued um to the sport and all that. That was so good. I loved it. I really, really um loved it. All right, so moving right along to the next character in this movie, the character of Timmy San, the social media influencer. This character is kind of like Tokyo Mac and Wild character. I mean, this person is a social media influencer, and I feel like what he portrayed in the movie is kind of like his lifestyle in the movie, kind of like, so it was not difficult um, for him to pull that off very well. So he did well in his acting also. I loved it. Um, so I would say kudos to Demi Fan, he did well on his performance in this movie. There are so many other actors that were on this movie that I was not able to um, talk about, like Abimbola Craig, like Liliana Febai that was in this movie. We also have the guy to the links that was in this movie. I have not been able to talk about them. They did well to so shout out to all of them. All right, so having said that, moving right along to what I liked about this movie, let me take a second. And see if I there's anything I liked about this movie. Okay, I think the only thing I liked about this movie was that they were able to portray the glitz and glam of the movie. I saw luxury, I saw glitz, I saw glam, like ranging from the fashion, the hair, the makeup, the money, the cars, the boats, the planes, the houses. Like it just screamed um, luxurious and it just screamed glam and glitz. So they were able to portray that very well in the movie. So I give them kudos um, to that. All right, moving right along to what I didn't like about the movie. First and foremost, I want to talk about sound. Sound was so bad. I mean, these people, I don't know what happened with the sound engineer. I don't know if they were not able to separate the voices of the actors um, from the voice of the music. So we were struggling, I for one. I was struggling to hear what they were saying in most of the scenes. So for me, sound was very bad. I don't know what happened there. Uh, they didn't do well in sound. People were really complaining or are really complaining about the sound of this movie. So the sound engineer did not do a very great job in this movie. So the next thing that I did not like about this movie is their music choice. Uh, I don't really know what happened with the music, but there were some scenes that some music was just so unnecessary. Take for example, the scene where Tokyo Maki was trying to sneak out of the house. I mean, what kind of music was that? What was that about? I, I don't really understand. And there were some scenes I expected some bomb music, like those scenes, those glamour girls um, went into um, to the whole house to these politicians. I expected they were coming in glitz and glam. I expected some bomb music. I mean, if you've seen the Bling Lagos chants, you will know what I'm talking about. The music was up and top notch i loved it so there are music choices in this movie now nah, they didn't do well they did like no 
it was not um good for me i didn't like it so the next thing that i did not like about this movie is that the scenes were all over the place it was kind of like so difficult to know what exactly the story was in this movie we couldn't really tell what the story is about um one minute is about um donna and um Gemma as sister they are falling out and whatever then uh even at that we're not really able to know what really happened between them they they couldn't tell us what the problem was i mean i mean the person kept saying she broke the rules but what rule did she actually break nothing then the next minute is about emma who is struggling in the street um to take her family out of the clothes of poverty and she finally lands in sick victims um escort um business and all that the next minute is about alexander who stole a huge amount of money from this politician and then they're looking for him and all that and all that i mean what is this story about i am asking you guys the producers and the directors of this movie because i couldn't really tell it was difficult to tell okay so the next thing i did not really like about this movie is that some scenes were just so unnecessary take for example the scene where um donna um, went to lebanon to see the other elder ladies i think escort ladies also to plead with them to talk to chief about the missing money and all that i feel that that thing was just not necessary because after that we did not see these ladies talking to chief trying to pacify chief about the missing money so what really happened in that scene so i felt they shouldn't have brought that thing taking us from how donna took a plane uh took a boat then to another boat just to meet them no it was not necessary at all then the scene where one of donna's girls played by Segula was overdosing on drugs a couple of times those things i feel that they were just so unnecessary now nah. then the scene where they brought um uh Aka only spoke French and all that <sighs> what was that about like they lost me there I, I I don't know what was happening there so some things were just so unnecessary if you ask me okay guys so the next thing or the next thing that I did not really like about this movie was that there were a lot of loopholes for example um the backstory the backstory of um Donna and Gemma's relationship. How did they get into this escort business in the first place? How did Gemma leave this um, escort business? What was the reason for her leaving? Um, who was that man that was in, on the hospital bed that finally died? Um, nothing, no backstory at all. What is really her financial situation that made her want to come back into a business she had left? I don't really know what happened there. Then another thing they didn't really tell us, they really, really explained to us was what happened to Alexander okay alexander stole money okay he died who killed him what happened to his body nothing 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 so there were a lot of loopholes like they didn't allow us to connect properly um with this character but they le left us up where they left us unsatisfied so there were so many loopholes i thought they should have done better um when it comes to this plot so their plot was very weak they were just all over the place like bringing in unnecessary things and all that now nah, i didn't like that as well so the next thing that you know like about this movie was the flat landing that they gave us i mean what was that about i didn't understand it okay first and foremost we have a bunch of people in a room emma Gemma, donna and the ribe then a hacker that only spoke french okay initially they showed us two flash drives and all that all that um the confirmed money was in one the one that this equation and then go back to chief and finally they said nothing is there then they needed another another flash drive they said okay it's been zeribe then the flip that happened between zeribe and um sharon i don't really know what that was about then after finding the flash on the river, she took the river out. Then Donna, out of nowhere, brings out another flash from our weed. Where did the third flash come from? Like, I don't know what happened there. They lost me there. And that is how it ended. How? I mean, there were so many uh, unanswered questions on the landing. They didn't end it well. It's just like, you know, starting a story. You're starting the story very well. Then you're ending it very weak. Like you're not, I mean, after the movie, like when it ended, I was like, is that the end? What is that? What was that? Did I just watch that? So it was very, very bad, 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 bad.
all right guys so that brings me to my final thoughts on this movie first and foremost i think uh, that they would have done better on this movie considering the fact that it was directed by Buki and Jackie Ye. She has done um, a couple of movies that I like. One is Illegal in Transit. She directed that movie. So I don't really know what happened. I don't really know what happened on set of this movie. Another thing is that I feel like that is not what they intended to shoot initially. Something just happened. There was a mix up somewhere or something went wrong. I don't really know. They should tell us what really happened because we didn't enjoy that at all then for me i would say that i was so unsatisfied um, with this movie so for me if i want to rate it i'm going to rate it a four over ten why because um the performances of the actors were top notch i loved it they were able to showcase the glitz and glam in the movie and that's it so i give them a four over ten and uh, that is so bad so flat for a movie that is currently showing on netflix all right guys so that brings me to the end of this video please guys have you seen the movie glamour girls if you have not it is currently showing on netflix so go and watch it then after watching it you come on here comment down below your thoughts and your opinions on the movie also comment down below if you agree with me with what i had to say about this movie please i would love 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 to read from you guys also don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you like it share it with your family and friends also if you're yet to subscribe to my channel please go on there and click on the subscribe button and the notification bell just beside it so you get notified each time i post a new video i post videos relating to personal development tips health and wellness as well as movies and series reviews just like this one so guys Thank you guys for watching. See you in my next video. And as always, remain beautiful.